It's like Blair Witch happening somewhere up in there. Got the, got right. the light shining up in your face. I like it. All the secrets are out. You got so to, what's you got going some... on, Chief? Are we recording? We're rolling right now. So, yes, yeah. we are. What's going on, man? So, hey, Pete, welcome. Uh, what do you got going on? You're always doing comedy. You're doing music. You're doing something somewhere. What's happening right now? Uh, right now, I'm just sitting here talking to you. So mm -hmm. I have a free minute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the the I rare free. I I gotta tell you something. I haven't touched Skype in about I think 2014 was the last time I touched Skype. And when I opened it up about a half hour ago, I had like a mile of porn conversations that were like ready to that uh, that people were sending me. So I'm glad uh, I could do that for you. I'm glad I could make that happen. Yeah, and my hand is completely sore because I'm a guy who just can't say no. So I had to masturbate to all of them. Oh, uh, um, I'm I hope I wasn't one of them. <laughs> Well, no, you're not dressed the the way I like. Hey, dude, I do my best, you know. I'm I'm surprised, you know. I try. You're not my type. So, how uh, how long you've been doing this? You've been doing music and comedy for a, a long time. How how long you've been out there doing it? Uh, I've been doing music uh, for like pay and stuff. I think since mm -hmm. about 2016. I've been playing guitar for about 20 years or so. I've been doing stand up about 11, and I'm just trying to mm -hmm. parcel out all my time to. Make sure I have time for everything. What were you doing before that? Did you have a real job at some point? Well, I still have a real job. I mean, uh, do I, you really? Yeah. I mean, I may give the appearance of being a full-time professional comedian. Well, but you do. That's good. That's the way to do it. The secret is out. I fake it. Well, you got to fake it. Uh, till you make well, it. Yeah. I was going to say you got to fake it while you're faking it. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Steven Tyler said fake it till you make it. So. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I say why stop? If, you, if you're good at faking it, keep on faking it. Nothing yeah, every woman that. I've been with pretty much uh, has done that. So, hey, you know, as long as she makes you feel like a man, that's what is important, right? That's right. Yeah, she didn't. They didn't ever account for the fact that I didn't really care. <laughs> so, so what do you love more? You love comedy or music more? Oh God, I hate that you asked me that question. I you got to choose both. one. You got to choose one over the other. You tr you, it's a it's a fatal alternative. You got to have one, not the other. <sighs> so, what is this like, Sophie's Choice? Has to be, right? Oh, crap. Uh, I guess I, I guess I'd go with stand up because you don't have to carry as much. It's a good reason. <clears throat> yeah, I, uh, I love. Yeah, comedy. I don't need a line six helix to get on stage and tell jokes. That's true. Yeah, I, uh, I love comedy. I've been entertaining since I was a, a child and performing professionally since I was a teen, but. Um, but I'm, I'm a music lover, right? Uh, I'm, I'm a, I'm an, a lover of art. Music just happens to be the the platform I express myself best in. I think you know. Sure. Uh, but I will say this: I'm 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 constantly developing, redeveloping my act. So next time you see me, it's going to be uh, going to be different. I'll promise you that. It's well, that's all. It's, it's what it's all about. It's what it's all about. It's about the evolution. Yeah, yeah. Just getting I, to the have, next level. Have you seen the Steve Martin documentary? Uh, no. I read the I read his book though, uh, which is really good. I'm I. I I have to watch the uh, the documentary. It's on my it's on my list. It's on Apple TV uh, Plus, right? Yeah, and uh, yes, and it's called uh, Steve Martin Into Pieces. Into of course, it had to be a play on words, right? So the two part sure. documentary Into Pieces. Uh, but you know what was crazy about that dude is he he never did that act after seventy four. I don't think we even think about that. You know, when we think about Steve Martin, that it, when the jerk came out, when he stepped into the movies, he quit stand up altogether. Didn't do it ever again. He gave up stand up in 74. I thought it was a lot later than that. Isn't that crazy? I mean, that's what the documentary said. Now, I think we saw him on, you know, tonight show appearances and things of that nature. But but the the crazy white suit arrow through the head, the the quintessential Steve Martin that we think of when we think of Steve Martin stand-up was short-lived in his career. <laughs> it's, was that it, all recorded it, before like 1979, 1980? The uh, the documentary stuff? No, no, the uh, his everything, all his concerts and his albums and stuff. Yeah, it had been recorded. Uh, before, I mean, according to, I, that's what surprised me. The 74 was the last, because I remember a lot of stuff being in the late 70s. I thought albums came out, but. This is crazy. what I'm saying, including yeah. King Tut. Right, right. Well, that, I guess that was a Saturday Night Live thing as well. So I don't know that that counts really when you consider his his kind of solo stand up thing. But dude, he was opening for uh, big acts and arenas and bombing and getting fired the first time. <laughs> well, I guess so, that's a testament to persistence because he kept doing it and look what happened. And and that's what we were talking about. And we, what what got me on that was you talking about the evolution of an act. 
you know, that's that's where he finally got to the point where he's like, okay, either I figure this thing out or I don't have a career <laughs> ever. And maybe he was referring. Maybe they were referring to his earlier incarnation before he became the wild and crazy guy. That's when he wrapped it up in '74, and then he went to the next stage. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm I, I'm also dyslexic, so who sounds knows like a happened. plausible theory to me, anyways. Yeah, but what's crazy is you you just I mean so much of Steve Martin's material, so much of his persona, the iconic stuff that you think of, was so early. That that's all I'm saying. You know, you just it's it's interesting when you think about that that somebody that. Well, I'm going to do this. No, now I'm going to do movies. No, I'm going to. Do... <laughs> and he was a musician as well, and that's how he started. A phenomenal banjo player, I'm sure you know. So. Oh yeah, as a matter of fact, I saw him at uh, one of the local casinos across the river in Indiana. Um, I'm trying to think. I think I think it was known as Horseshoe at the time, mm. and now it's I think it's called Caesars. But uh, we went to see Steve Martin doing his banjo thing. He's really good. That's awesome. So who's of your favorite? He managed to stick some jokes in there too, and it was fun. Oh, oh yeah. So, so who who is the 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 creme de la creme for you when it comes to comedians? Who who do you think is the best out there? That you've... Um, I'm just gonna go for my influences. Um, mm -hmm. Three of them really: Eddie Murphy. Well, actually four: uh, George Carlin, Eddie mm -hmm. Murphy, John Stewart, Dave Attell. Yeah, and and no particular order. No, but well, I guess in chronologically, that's kind of how the way I listed it. Yeah, that as a matter of fact, that's how it did. That's how it works out chronologically. I was first turned on to Carlin, then Eddie Murphy, then uh, John Stewart, and then David Tell. Wow, I got the amazing pleasure years ago of going out at the Opera House and bringing up Carlin. It was the coolest thing in the uh, ever. I didn't get to meet him. He didn't want to meet anybody before the show. I get that as a performer that you want to be in the zone. You don't want any of those distractions. But it was super cool. I got to do that. So, yeah, I got to tell you, that's a hell of a thing. So I guess I'm one degree of separation from George Carlin through you. If only I would have met him. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's a cool. I mean, I've been doing radio since the 80s, man. I've had so many cool opportunities to do things like that that I, I would. It, it's not because of talent by any means. It was because of who I am, where I was at the time and, and those opportunities. But, yeah, very, very gracious for them. It was super cool to be able to do that. You failed to mention that we also share that. What's that? Because I'm X Radio. Oh yeah, yeah. I did, well, I did forget forget to mention that. So yeah. yeah and I um, worked through I worked through the '80s and through the '90s, and I, I finally hung it up in 2000 because uh, corporatization was just putting the squeeze on, and I needed to make money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. You know the magic of radio that it used to be. Uh, unfortunately, will never be again. And you know the the places we have to go and and do content even remotely similar to what the creative early days of radio were is here online. And even then it's not the same because, you know, there was something about the magic of that, all that live element and everything being so immediate and crazy and off the charts like it was until the corporate guys came in. We got Clinton to blame for that, the Clinton administration. That's right, because uh, it was the telecom bill. Yeah, not to get political, but it was... Under exactly under his <laughs> administration, <laughs> he ushered in the big business of corporate radio. Yeah, Squash the little happened. cats. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I, and now as then, three people are probably listening to me. You know, mm -hmm. so yeah, that, sure. that, that hasn't changed. If if we're lucky, we'll get three. Right. Yeah. No. Yeah. So uh, so what, what do you, what did you say had coming up? You, what's your next comedy show? Oh, I don't have anything booked until I think God. Um, Either May or June, one of the two. You ever tried yeah, any, really comedy, about, what's any that? comedy busking? You ever tried any comedy busking? Like just busk out on the street with comedy, just make people listen to you with a bullhorn. I'm going to try it. I'm going to see if it uh, works. You know, I've seen that happen, and it, it, <laughs> I've seen it work, and I've seen it not work. I've seen <laughs> it not work more often than I've I'm seen sure. it work, so yeah. I'm not going to bother. But uh, music-wise, we're going to be uh, playing locally in Louisville. Uh, we're, we're, we're breaking in our current bass player, our newest, ba our latest bass player, uh, we haven't learned his name yet, so we just call him number five. Well, have the others spontaneously combusted? Is that what happened to the uh, other four? The, the first one uh, passed away. The okay. second, third, and fourth ones, they just uh, they came and went. And, uh, well, the fourth one, actually, he had a family thing, so he had to let go. And, uh, yeah, the fifth guy, he's he's really good. So uh, we, uh, we feel uh, very confident that things are going to go well with him. It was uh, Spinal Tap with the drummers would spontaneously combust, Yes, right? that's correct, yeah. <laughs> So we, we may change the trend. We may have bass players that start exploding yeah, yeah. spontaneously. And wh where's that gig and when did you say? Friday? It's a, well, it's, hold on, let me pull up my phone. I have to get my calendar out. 
That's right. I know this is so unprofessional. I should have had this right at the tip of my tongue. Let's see. I don't believe in professionalism. What are you talking about? May 11th at a place called Air Devils Inn in Louisville. Oh, Air Devils Inn. I used to play there back in the 80s, man. It's been in there for a long time, right across in Bowman Field. Yeah, and I'll bet the toilet worked back then. <laughs> I'm not sure it did. Yeah. They've actually yeah. made it. They've actually made it work. So it's, it's everything's OK. And they, and they fixed the lock on the door, too. So you don't have to, like, you know, hold one hand in front of you while you're dropping a growler. So that's Friday. Yeah. Friday, May 11th. Actually, well, no, oh, Saturday, May, 11th. May 11th. Sorry. OK, so it's on. It's in May, May 11th. OK. Yeah. I'm sorry. So that's it's like a week after Derby. OK. Well, uh, dude, if I'm not booked, I'll come see you. Oh, please. We need the money. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm a musician as well. I know how it works. Yeah, uh, it's more of a it's more of a glorified rehearsal. I got us in there like back in 2016 when the band first got together, and we were just like we just go there to play warm up gigs to like work the kinks out of the act. Mm -hmm. Well, I love the Air Devils and all those places in Louisville back in the day. You know, Dutchess and Phoenix Hill and Mayors and uh, Red Barn and Cardinals Inn. I mean, I played them all. It was amazing. So there's my uh, there's my dryer. Is that is that the timer? Does that mean the interview's over? I think it is. Yeah, I think it's it's like time. It's it's either that or my clothes will be wrinkled. This never happens on the Tonight Show. Yeah. yeah. Well, there is that. Yeah, Jimmy there's Fallon's that. dryer never goes off. Oh, hey, thanks a lot for coming by. Well, you know, if if uh, if it did, he would have people to take care of it. So I'm I'm not on that level yet. We'll say yet. Fingers crossed. That's right. It's happening. Pete, man, great to see you. Great to hang out with you. Uh, we'll link up anything you got uh, that you want people to check out. So uh, make sure I got that, and we'll, we'll make sure that it's here. Uh, well, be sure to check me out on Instagram. And uh, Instagram, and uh, I just recently got on TikTok. I mostly post clips there. If you want to see samples of my work, feel free to go to Instagram or TikTok, and it's W-O-L-Y-N-E-C. That's how you spell it. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be one of the only ones on either one of those platforms. It's a safe name. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Not a lot of you. Depends on your perspective. Yeah. It's one of those names that, that if you were ever, you know, a serial killer, they would have to put the middle initial in there. Absolutely. <laughs> Be great talking to you, man. All right. See you, buddy. I right, did. We'll talk soon.